another mass shooting to a potential deadly hurricane to more uh, crazy tweets by our president. <laughs> Sounds like another day, another week in America. Absolutely. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Climate gets almost... worse, ma- mass shootings go up, and more uh, <laughs> Twitter storms going on. So, um, so what are the big uh, events that you've seen for the for the week uh, that you think are important for progressives to be mindful of? Well, you just nailed a few of them there. Uh, the the gun debate uh, definitely comes to mind. Um, let's see what else. Um, media bias. Um, just this is kind of a standard protocol uh, for the. Uh, progressive person uh, to just keep an eye out. I saw CNN kept Andrew Yang out of a, of a poll uh, where they put Beto O'Rourke in there at 1% and they showed the graph and Andrew Yang was polling in that same poll at 3%, but they didn't show his face. They didn't show his name. They didn't show him polling at 3%. Uh, so once again, just this media bias pops up. Uh, we got to recognize it. We got to call it out. Um, it just keeps happening over and over again. It, it just brings up, it makes me think more and more every time this happens that we need like a restructuring of media. We, we need to go deep with uh, our politics and the media's relationship to politics. It, it, it's, a, it's a deep dive. It's a really, you know, loaded topic here, but we have to get to some point of objectivity here. Uh, this is just media bias. Uh, you know, it's, it's just off the it's off the hook here. Um, what, what do you think about that? Like, uh, we need to get some like some neutrality in media outlets. You know what I'm saying? Like, just to leave Andrew Yang out like that. And you know, it's Tulsi, it's Bernie, uh, it's it's anybody. You know, whoever it is, it, it can be anybody. Uh, anyone who's populist, anyone who's progressive. Uh, you know, it could be anybody at any given time. Mm-hmm. So. It's just something I keep seeing. What, what are your thoughts here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think what Andrew Yang and maybe some of his supporters who have on board with Yang as they may be new to politics, may be attracted to some of his policies like the uh, UBI Freedom Dividend are essentially going through what I call progressive newbie onboarding by mainstream media. Uh, so they will start to black you out, not include you on a list. Um, the second one is they will create a way to get pitch you against another progressive. And we've seen this time and time and time again. Uh, I don't, you know, I've been doing this for three or four years. This is just the same song and dance. Then they put out tons of smear articles. They talk about your pricely, uh, your price tag on your policies and how they're not realistic. Uh, and then they'll complain about your fundraising and they'll find something as they just put out another article, uh, ABC, uh, complaining about um, Andrew Yang taking money from speeches that he'd given to J.P. Morgan um, while he was running for president. Although those two were not related, that's what they were essentially trying to conflate the two. Uh, so these are typical signs that you have earned the progressive badge as a presidential candidate. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. When they start coming after you and being flagrant uh, in, in their attempts to, you know, be exclusionary or to, to smear you, uh, you know, you're under their skin, you know, you're on their, uh, you know, t- their their bucket list of candidates that they don't like. And so, yeah, a lot of Yang gangers are, you know, pretty new. They seem pretty new to politics and, uh, you know, they're getting their first taste of it. And, you know, we got it big back in 2016. Uh, so it's kind of like old hat for me and you and other progressives, but it's, it's still going. It's, it's, it's just a never ending thing that we have to deal with because uh, these private media companies are just flagrant about their bias for who they want to support and who they want to exclude. It's absolutely insane when we talk about free speech and we talk about democracy and we talk about, oh, we're the freest nation in the world. No, we're not. Not when it comes to this. Mm -hmm. These are private companies, private entities, propping up the people they want you to know about, even when 
people like Andrew Yang are are pulling high, getting a lot of donors, doing well objectively, and they just leave them out because they want to. Mm-hmm. How is that fair? How is that just not flawed? Yeah, and it's not a. Uh... I personally feel like it's a conspiracy theory, given that, you know, the complaint about his mic being turned off and so many countless uh, oh. pieces of evidence of him being excluded uh, from That's different, um, you know, media posts or whatnot from, in particular, uh, MSNBC has been the the main um mm-hmm network that really goes out of the way to exclude Andrew Yang, uh, even acknowledging that he exists. Another yeah. uh, often thing they will do is they will bring the candidate on and then they will only highlight some of the more lighter parts of their policies like Andrew Yang, I hear you're, forced, uh, you're against circumcision, uh, I hear you want to get rid of the penny, you know, uh, and that's one they'll typically do, or they'll talk about the price tag, how uh, you know unrealistic it is, how are you going to pay for that. But if you bring on a centrist, they're going to talk about serious policies. What would you do if you're president in this given this very d- tough situation? Uh, they will bring up the price tag of any other policies, uh, be it uh, spending more time in Afghanistan or in Syria. You know that's obviously costly, costs trillions of dollars every year. No one says anything about that. Um, so yeah, I mean it's it just again like I said it goes back to um, they know he's a he's a progressive and they don't like him. Um, so yeah, and yeah they just they, it, it's just controlling the narrative. If they're not being exclusionary, they're gonna control the narrative, uh, and that's that's all in the framing of the questions, how the hosts and the anchors frame everything. Uh, it's just it's a it's a complete screw job. I mean, I know we have alternative media. I know if we want the truth, we can get the truth. But the point is, we we shouldn't have to be in this position where we're drilling down to find the truth uh, about you know about the candidates. You know, for our democracy, our you know, it, it's so ridiculous how they have so much control over the narrative. And, and the truth should just be there. They should just be being objective as possible, but they're not. Mm-hmm. And what I've noticed during this particular presidential campaign year um, is unfortunately some of the um, social media outlets, uh, the bigger ones such as uh, Sam Cedar, um, you know, these are examples that are starting to take on some of the attitude. Uh, TYT, uh, Emma Viglin, unfortunately, are taking on this attitude of, oh, we're going to be able to get Bernie elected if we go after Yang. Or we make sort of like these snide remarks against Tulsi, or we sort of jab uh, Marianne Williamson. This is the way we're going to get Bernie elected. And unfortunately, uh, that now, of course, mainstream media, they're doing the same thing, uh, trying to pit Yang now against Bernie. And this is something we've got to stop. It's got to stop. Um, Sam Cedar's got to stop doing this. Emma Viglin has to stop going after uh, Tulsi and, and as well as uh, Anna Kasparian. And mm-hmm. we've all got to come together. And look at this as an alliance and not let them tear us apart. That's the only way I think we're going to be able to get a progressive elected because we're not going to be able to win the general election if we're so angry at each other, much less than the uh, nomination. If we're just splitting hairs over, well, you're not for the federal jobs program or you're not for UBI. Or you are you said something to Modi back so and so, or you're not perfect on Israel and Palestine, and because what I feel like these supporters or these YouTube hosts are doing is they think this is going to gain points uh, for their can- choice candidate because they think well let me attack Tulsi. What it does in- instead it leaves a bad taste in other progressive right. supporters' mouths. And even YouTube hosts like you and I are trying to do everything in our power 
to keep this alliance together because we right. recognize uh, in terms of strategy, <laughs> you know, it's right. absolutely essential that we have an alliance that it has is, is so undeniably strong and nothing can tear it apart. Uh, otherwise, we're not going to win. It's going to be a centrist. What are your thoughts Absolutely. on all that? Oh yeah, I mean, listen, it's it's primary season. Where this is this is the battle of ideas. Uh, this is you know going to bat for your candidate or candidates. Uh, th there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing intrinsically wrong with going to bat for the policies you want for the candidates you want uh, who are on your side, who are technically the left or the right, wherever you're at. You know, let's have healthy arguments, healthy debates and whatnot, but remember that we have to be one coalition going forward. We cannot build this animosity uh, in our rhetoric, in our arguments, in our debates, and just, just build division, you know what I mean? Like, let's have a healthy argument, let's, let's understand, recognize the differences, let's hash them out, let's compare federal jobs program with UBI, uh, let's point out flaws in candidates we think have flaws, uh, but at the same time, that needs to be balanced with, okay, we also have to win. We have to find a way to get a progressive in office. So I just think we need to balance it. Well, I would take it a step further. Um, okay. I trust our progressive candidates. I trust Bernie Sanders. I trust Andrew Yang. I trust Mary Williamson. I trust Tulsi Gabbard. So I don't even feel hashing out the splitting hair, small, you know, minute details of, you know, what may not be perfect about the federal jobs program or what may not be perfect uh, to, uh, for, uh, you know, Andrew Yang's UBI, because if we're honest, Andrew Yang's UBI, we can really only afford $500 a month if we're going to not go into deficit spending. If we're honest about Bernie Sanders' uh, federal jobs program, program, the guaranteed part of it may come with some problems. So if we're Honest about Tulsi Gabbard, we got some issues with her being uh, supporting a policy um, a against BDS. Uh, you know, uh, with Marianne Wimps, we got some problems with her not being able to be so uh, as good as we, we would like her to be in uh, being policy minded when she's she's speaking. So there are problems with our candidates and their policies, absolutely. But mm -hmm. I don't think the answer is spending all of our time. Uh, debating about how to polish these policies uh, but I think instead it makes more sense as a, co a cohesive group to start going after the centrist I'm noticing too much right. of these channels uh, and and YouTube posts are just or I'm sorry Twitter uh, tweets are all about attacking Bernie Sanders federal jobs program or Andrew Yang's UBI or Telsey didn't do this she said this the wrong way or so and so said that the the wrong way you know the sort of the progressive fire you know circular firing squad and mm -hmm. this is exactly exactly where the centrists and the mainstream media wants us they want the infighting they want us to to uh, get irritated and have outrage over the smallest little details or the differences between, even if they're great, you know, uh, Andrew Yang's UBI versus federal jobs program, perhaps that we have to look at this. They want us to look at as these being mutually exclusive when they're actually mutually inclusive. And yeah, maybe they're not perfect. But my point in all of this is it's wasting time. It's wasting time that could be spent on differentiating Bernie Sanders with Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren. Spend time on differentiating Andrew Yang with other centrist um, Democrats. That's where we should be spending our efforts. Uh, this other stuff, to me, is not serving anything. That can be done later uh, in yeah. that you know, if if a progressive gets elected and if we stay together, more likely one will get elected, then hopefully three or four up on that stage, then we can hash out the, the minor details. Yeah, no, I, I fully agree. Um, the parameters of, of, of discourse has to be adjusted here where it's not progressive on progressive, uh, you know, attacks. It's if it if there are going to be attacks or just challenges, let's say challenges, uh, you know, it's progressive versus centrist. 
But I know a lot of people in the progressive community, uh, you know, call Mariana centrist. They call Andrew Yang a centrist. They call Tulsi a Republican. Uh, so I think me and you have a different understanding of who the progressives are than, say, the hardline Bernie supporters. And I'm pretty hardcore with Bernie. And I know you are, too. But there's still th- progressives who are who are who are framing Andrew Yang uh, and Marianne Williamson and Tulsi Gabbard even as, you know, not progressive candidates. And I just don't see them that way. They're all not Bernie Sanders. There is no other Bernie Sanders. But Bernie, there's only one Bernie. We get it. Uh, No one's going to come close to Bernie. We know that. But these are still progressive-minded candidates. Absolutely. It's all about improve the advancement of the human condition. That's what this is about. And people may have different understandings of how we're going to get there. But the fact is we all want to get there. So if we are looking for a fundamental change of, of the economic structure, then some people may argue Yang will be better at doing that. Others may argue that Sanders is better at doing that. But we are at an input impasse. We're going to hit an impasse, and it's going to split the vote. Now, some will argue the progressive vote. Some may argue, well, that's great because it's more time in the, on the debate stage, and they're going to spend all the time focusing on Yang and Sanders. Yeah, I disagree. It's going to look – it's going to essentially create – I've I, my opinion that those that would even think of maybe joining the Sanders team or the Yang team on the outside look as though we're bickering over silly stuff they don't even really understand fully. And there here's the reason you don't want to join the progressives because look at them. They're they're outrage culture and they're just attacking each other. They don't even have any cohesion. Now look at what uh, Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders did. Now you can argue all day that you don't believe uh, Elizabeth Warren is a progressive, and that's perfectly fine. And I have all kinds of reason to believe she isn't. I think she's more of your salt and pepper progressive. I think salt and pepper doesn't make, you know, you salt and pepper, but you know, at least some salt and pepper in there. But look at what they did during the debates, during the second debate, and look at where it got them. They both went up jointly in the polls by at least five percent. Now, if they they had gone after each other. It would have done nothing for them. It would have been advantageous for the centrist and maybe even stagnated them or even hurt them. And people just don't understand this, you see. Yeah. Yeah, we could take a cue from them. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, uh, Bernie and Elizabeth Warren teaming up just naturally, instinctively. Um like we should be doing that, and and I have been doing that, and I know you've been doing that too. Like we just like okay, well, let's let's have our main candidates, but let's build a team here. We have to figure out who's the most progressive in the field and and, and cater to them and support them, uh, because you know <laughs> I know everyone's all in on Bernie. I get it. I, I remember 2016. I re- I, I I get it, but it, sometimes you just have to think it's not good enough. You want to like, you know, you want to spread your bets around. You want to build a, a coalition. You want to you know, just deepen your chances of getting a candidate in there. If it isn't Bernie, uh, I don't see anything wrong with that. And that's the healthiest way to go here. I just, I just wish more people were doing what we're doing. Well, that's what I'm saying. So if, if the supporters stop uh, Yang supporters, they have to be the better people because they have to rise up and, you and I are doing the fight, like I'm doing the fight on the front line of uh, essentially cleaning up the mess that some of these burners, burners are leaving behind, like Sam Cedar or Michael Brooks, you know, these really horrendous videos on UBI. So what we have to do is we've got to get people like uh, that are more malleable, like uh, Mike Figueredo or uh, Emma Viglin. I think those are people that are reachable. You know, Crystal Kyle from Klinsky. The Hill, Kyle Kalinske. We need to team up with them. They get it. Kyle rarely goes after any of the progressives. He has a couple of times, but mainly he generally tries to be fair. He doesn't go after Yang only or Tulsi mm-hmm. only. You know, he goes – he's even made videos about Bernie. That's not a good move, Bernie. That doesn't look good, you know. Um, right. that's, a, that's, a, that's okay. You see what I'm saying? But if you're just constantly right. going after very something myopic like the federal jobs program, it's horrendous, and I don't like the guarantee part, or UBI, it's just horrible. And, you know, that's not a working strategy. 
you know. Um, now, I was going to also say real quickly that um, that uh, what was I going to say? <laughs> Lost my train of thought for a moment. Um, but um, yeah, we just have to reach out to that to to the other community. Uh, reach out to Mike. Leave tweets with him. Remind him, you know, like remind everyone. Let's try to remain neutral. Let's remain a team. You know, because we're on the front lines, you know, the YouTube hosts, we're on the front lines of this, you know, even right. like uh, Paget, you know, we get a reminder. There's no need for you to make this argument between the federal jobs program versus the UBI. How about we talk about progressive policies versus centrist policies? Let, that's a better use of time. You see. Right. Um, so anyway, that's kind of where I'd like to see us go. And um, so what do you think are some of the ways beyond what? we've just described that we can continue to build the strength and this progressive coalition. It sounds generic, but just having a more open mind, um, like a lot of the people, you know, the hard, hardline Yangers, the hardline Tulsi supporters, hardline burners. Like if, if we're going into this being hardlined, like we just chop down our chances uh, of getting a progressive minded candidate in there. So it sounds generic, like I said, but being more open minded, being more open to other candidates outside of our first choice. Mm -hmm. I keep saying, have your number one. It's okay to have your number one. I get it. Everyone has their favorite football team or their favorite basketball team and they root for them hardcore, but we have to think, broader we have to be more open we have to just broaden our chances here so i don't know just I keeping think, an open mind i think it's also good to understand there is a threshold you know like we we say okay let's pick four you know that we can definitely support and if those four mm -hmm. don't come through for whatever reason then we move to the second tier which i i put people like warren or castro into that you know second tier you know, but our top four, we shouldn't be bruising each other or, you know, like splitting hairs, you know, and arguing about how this policy is better than that policy or my captain is better than your captain because my captain, you know, he's he gets up and, and makes breakfast for us. Yeah, but my captain, you know what he does? You know what I mean? It just mm -hmm. doesn't serve anything. And so it's no different than it would look as ridiculous as if Bernie Sanders supporters went after Tulsi Gabbard or Tulsi Gabbard supporters went after Bernie Sanders as it does Yang supporters that go after Bernie or Bernie supporters that go after Yang. And the same thing with Maria Williamson. And, you know, so that's something we just got to do away with. This, these yeah. discussions about how these po my, my policy. So essentially what yangers and sanders and everybody's doing they're attacking each other's policies because they think that's going to erode yangers supporters to come on over to bernie's camp or vice versa and what it actually does it does the opposite it creates right. these two camps you know putting their feet even more d into the dirt and then it starts festering emotions deep wounded emotions and then if Bernie ends up getting the nomination or Yang ends up getting the nomination, a lot of people are just, I don't like you. I'm not going to vote for you. The way I was treated, there's no way I'm going to vote for Bernie. There's no way I'm going to vote for Yang because you people are right. just a bunch of nasty people. I don't have anything to happened. do with you. you know. And that's what I mean by an alliance. And we've got to remind our candidates and, and try to encourage Bernie. You know, reach out to him and say, hey, Bernie, there was a time that you – supported the UBI, do you still do you still support one? Maybe not today, but would you be open to it? Rather than creating questions around do you support a federal jobs program or UBI, do you support Andrew Yang's UBI? You see, those are not fair questions. And like if I were going to interview Bernie Sanders, I would say, Bernie, are you still open to universal basic income? I know you were in the past. Would you be open to it in the future? That to me is an open ended question, you know, that you know that really allows that, that person to have a fair chance to explain themselves. And the same thing with Andrew Yang, asking the questions you may have rather than putting them in the corner about certain things and comparing them to Bernie Sanders, you know, um, you know, like what um, Sam Cedar and them do, which is 
well, this is just a Trojan horse, isn't it, Mr. Yang? This uh, right. freedom dividend of yours, and it's just a Trojan horse. You know, those are not coming from an honest position, right? Right. Um, so, uh, so moving forward on this, um, just reaching out to people, reminding people, and we also have to be at the front lines, I guess. Uh, any other thoughts on that before we move on to the next topic? No, I think we covered a lot there. Okay. Um, what are your thoughts on this Andrew Yang giving speeches to uh, J.P. Morgan and being paid for those <clears> speeches? <throat> okay. I mean, what, what do you see, the if, if any, fallout or thoughts around that? Hmm. Well, let's see here. I'm trying to remember the context. Uh, I believe it was... He was doing this, like uh, promoting his book, I believe. Did I get that right? Was he was he yeah, promoting right. his book? Mm -hmm. So he uh, filed for presidency to run for president um, in November 2018, or was it 2017, actually? 2017. And so in, in the interim, he's had a bona fide uh, profession as a writer, uh, an entrepreneur, a speaker, uh, so this has been his job for many years, a couple years at least, and he just became more and more active as a presidential candidate, and of course those two can uh, intertwine because what he's running on and his book, they are intertangled with each other, so you can't, you can't separate uh, his campaign um, – platform from his book content you see and right. this is what's kind of creating some problems because he was um given speeches to organizations corporations like jp morgan uh about his book and his, about his ubi and the onset of automation and his concerns about that and so there are some concerns that because of the overlapping was he being paid for his campaign, which would violate the Federal Election Commission regu yeah. rules and regulations. So, yeah, that, that the overlap is a concern. Um, like I, I, I think he even said it was like he he said he was using even Yang 2020 logos, uh, kind of like you know in an accidental way. Um, yeah, I think it, it he seems like it's incidental. I just want to make sure that uh, the way I understand it, he wasn't. He couldn't recall like which was when he would use it or when he w was not using it, and that he may or may not have. So we don't know. Okay, so he doesn't yeah, even more, seem to know. Yeah, it seems if he did, it it seems like it's incidental. Like he didn't, you know, he didn't know the rules. Uh, it was there by accident or something like that. I can give him the benefit of the doubt on that. He seems like a you know a straight shooter, an honest person. Uh, so I don't see him like being all nefarious in, in, in a smoky back room with JP Morgan. Uh, I see him there promoting his book uh, and they want to know more about automation, how it's affecting regular working people. Uh, you know, I can see it just being a business venture for him promoting his book, you know, by a not so, you know, a lot of people don't like JP Morgan for very good reasons. Um, so uh, they're right to be suspicious. Uh, but right. I really feel like it's something more incidental, more uh, Andrew Yang just promoting his book uh, and just getting people boned up on automation. Yeah, there's a term uh, for this uh, framing, and I don't know what it's called, um, but I wish I, my mind could think of it because we we definitely need to be mindful of this this term describing when mainstream media complains about something a candidate – uh, is doing, and then they go out of the way to support a candidate is doing, you know, 100 times more than that. You know, like Hillary Clinton was their doll darling in 27, 2016. She gave quarter million dollar speeches, and they didn't write anything, any articles complaining about that. And now here comes Andrew Yang getting ten thousand dollars for five speeches with J.P. Morgan that most likely were not, was not even related to his presidential campaign. And now they just go out of the way to, you know, to make it into some 
type, like you said, nefarious scene, like, oh, my God, look at Andrew Yang, and we need to do something, the world's falling apart, you know. Um, <laughs> but it wasn't a big deal for Hillary. Weird. Exactly. So, again, I think that, that that's what we're talking about, you know, sort of your progressive newbie uh, on onboarding, getting their, uh, getting their badge of honor uh, unintentionally, of course. They're not looking for it, but, you know, it's just another example of, Andrew Yang probably has to learn, you know, like this is something you can't do because unfortunately they're hypocrites and they're going to find something to anything insignificant to frame you on. And uh, even if they're hypocritical in doing it and they're going to figure out a way to get you to, to uh, say something bad about another progressive opponent. Uh, they didn't bring up Warren. They didn't bring up, um, you know, anyone else. They, but, you know, during the CNN interview with Chris Cuomo, they decided to go after Bernie, you know, um, and have Yang comment on Bernie's federal jobs program and compare that to UBI, even though they're not even related. They're just different animals, you know. Um, so that's what we have to be mindful of. But, yeah, I absolutely, I agree with you. I, I don't I don't just I, you know, I trust him. Uh, I think it was very innocent. And, um, you know, he even gave the a copy of the slides to ABC News when they requested them, and if he had something to hide, he would have said, "Hey, wait a minute, let's take that logo off," you know. Uh, right. But he, but he didn't. Uh, so that's even more indication that you know he's not hiding something. Um, so. Yeah, totally innocent. That's not a big deal, but biased media will try to blow up anything for people they don't like. So. Expect now, it. I wanted to bring another uh, charge, you know, progressives again, unfortunately, are, are the ones doing this. And it's not Tulsi supporters, but it's other progressives um, that mm -hmm. are going after Tulsi this time um, when she had a recent interview. And they, um, the host had asked her, well, what will you do if, uh, you know, a, a different candidate uh, wins the nomination? You know, that's not. Bernie or you or someone like that. She says, well, you know, I support any uh, candidate that wins the nomination. And of course, all kinds of people came out of the woodworks and were flipping over them, you know, oh, themselves boy. that she would even consider voting for Joe Biden, you know, or someone like that. What are your thoughts about that? <sighs> yeah, we're going to get to that conversation where we're going to have to potentially think about third party. Um, I think the default position for a lot of people. Tulsi included, is get into anybody but Trump mode. Um, uh, like I said, it's a default. It's not the first line here. We want someone who's progressive in there, obviously. But if a Joe Biden or, a, you know, a Pete Buttigieg or Cory Booker type of, uh, you know, centrist gets in there, she said she's going to support them. I, I just think it's her defaulting to to beating Trump um, and refocusing there from getting a progressive candidate in there to just getting the guy out. Um, and this is a conversation we haven't really had yet. We've been trying to put it off for a while. Is the third party uh, question here, if a centrist does get in there, you know, what are we going to do? Are we going to be like Tulsi and support if it's say Joe Biden? Or are we going to say, okay, we got to get Trump out of there. We got to go Joe Biden. It's 2016 all over again. Well, it's Hillary. We got to get, you know, we got, you can't have Trump get it. It's the same type scenario. Uh, so what do, what do you think if a Joe Biden gets it? Wow. What, what are your, well, I don't know about your plans, but I don't know if you want to go that far. <laughs> mm -hmm. We just haven't had this conversation yet. Yeah. Um, I, you know, for my own personal take on it, I'd, it's something I'd rather not have to consider or think about. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I hear you. For me, the discussion is more in that uh, Tulsi may have an opportunity to endorse someone at some point, um, you know, presuming that Joe Biden gets the nomination. Uh, it's more a question of the now and here uh, and how outraged people are about it. My angle on it would be that Tulsi Gabbard is a U.S. citizen and she has the right to support whoever she wants to. She can. She has the right to vote for whoever she wants to. That's her call, her judgment. I don't hold that against her. Uh, no more than I would hold uh, 
against Bernie for endorsing Hillary Clinton over Donald Trump. And I just think this is sort of, again, indicative of progressive outrage, uh, which I don't think serves us. Now, it's a different right. thing altogether for you as an individual to say, there's just no way I can stomach voting for Joe Biden. That's a personal call. Um, and I'm not in a position to let to tell you what to do in that instance. Uh, and I'd rather hold off on saying anything because I don't want to provide uh, Joe Biden, the boat Joe Bidens of the world, any advantage of knowing mm -hmm. what, how I think about that. Um, for okay. right now, you know, the, the, the discussion is just really for me about the, the sort of optics of Tulsi Gabbard doing this or saying this and me trying to, again, clean up the mess uh, that progressives keep spilling over, which is this outrage culture has got to end. Otherwise, it will be our end. So just from yeah. the optics look of it, thoughts around that. Yeah, no, I agree with everything you said there. Uh, it's just the outrage culture on the left is enough to break us up. It's enough to splinter us up uh, and create factions and create division. And when it's go time, uh, you know, we're not going to be there to coalesce uh, like the right does. Like we always talk about how the right coalesces no matter what. Tribal, no matter what. Whoever they put, no matter what, they want to win. They want to win more than anything. And we want to be right. <laughs> we want to be right, Josh. We just want to be right. That's all we want on the left is to be right. And it doesn't matter what the consequences are. It doesn't matter if we win or not. As long as right. we're right in our own little bubbles, who really cares? Yeah, there's a term called throwing the baby out with the bathwater. You know, the bathwater oh, gets yeah. a little dirty, and let's just throw the whole tub out. You know, it's like, <laughs> and there's the baby oh. out there, you know, in the cold, screaming, you right. know, and it's getting ready to die and freeze to death. And we exactly. wonder why the left just dies. You know, no, nobody gets voted in office, you know. Right, uh, exactly. It all falls apart. And it's like I've always applied that saying to people – who are generally the biggest crybabies. Like they, they just want to, if they lose, you know, they're going to take their football and they're going to go home. You know, they're just like the biggest powders, the biggest crybabies. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, they, they can't even, you know, they just can't stand being wrong on anything. Uh, they cannot stand an ounce of a sliver of compromise or uh, doing the right thing. It's, it, it blows my mind. It really and does. it's not just the supporters, Dave. It's also YouTube hosts. You know, if you have a YouTube host yeah. that's solely focusing on one candidate and everyone else is wrong and your candidate can do no wrong, then to mm -hmm. me that's a, that's not a YouTube host that is fair and balanced. They are essentially a cult leader, in my opinion. Like I would not, you know, for me, I don't really trust anyone that opens up a YouTube channel and constantly just talking only about Andrew Yang or Bernie Sanders or Tulsi Gabbard, you know, to me, that smacks of, you know, sort of cultish behavior. Um, yes. But rather look at ideology, you know, look at general, not specific ideology, but general mm -hmm. ideology and how, how do these people size up in general, not being perfect, but, you know, do they get you know, at least a C plus, you know, B minus. If so, I think they're doable. They're they're votable. You know. Um, yeah. Now that mm -hmm. that's bringing that brings me to another point I wanted to make about this is, if you think about the right, I think one of the reasons why they're so successful is they understand that uh, principle of um, they put their weight. They are a lot of them on the right. They believe in um, some form of God or um, savior, be it Muhammad, be it Jesus Christ, so forth and so on. And so they don't need a figure to be their savior, uh, ultimately, like in, in the, this world and the other world. And so what they do is they look at more of the ideology, their dogma, right? And they're so, like faith. you pointed out, so, yeah, the faith in that dogma, the loyal, they're loyal to that. And it doesn't matter if it's mm -hmm. Trump, it doesn't matter if it's Reagan, it doesn't matter if it's Bush. You know, it just doesn't matter to them. Just get the freaking leader in office and we'll bend them to our will, you know. Uh, but for yep. the left, it's like we actually want to create a savior figure in our selected candidate. Yang can do no wrong. 
and everyone else just go to, you know, H H E L L, you know, Mm -hmm. and that kind of cultish mindset, you know, looking for a savior in Yang or Bernie or Tulsi and not only expecting that she's going to save us, but she's got to live up to that mantra of being perfect. Right. Or I'm going to drop you, you know. It's just not a winning strategy in any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no one, and that's the thing. No one's looking at strategy. They're looking at being cheerleaders for, um, you know, for their number one. And I know this is a few YouTube, there's a few YouTubers like on the left who are like that. And I just, man, it's clutching it, the it really upset. It puts, I'm oh, sorry, that? clutching the pearls, the moral high ground. I'm better than you. And I can't believe that you, you know, you would hold that point of view. It's just wrong. You, you know, you, we should be flying in to take over Israel right now and give Palestine back the land. But I'm against war, you know, and I'm against force. It's like, what? What are you saying? Slow down. Think about this. You know, um, it's just no room for compromise on this tin, itsy bitsy little spider that crawl, crawl, you know, crawled across the floor. You know, 